What's up guys, this is Bolash from Racing Brick. A few days ago I asked you which of these two sets shall I review first, and this one was the clear winner. So let's see all details about the 42138 Ford Mustang Shelby GT500. On the front of the box we can see the car itself and a couple of interesting things. First of all this is a pullback set. Okay, I know, you don't like it, but don't stop the video yet. The other thing is the Augmented Reality Experience logo in the corner. That sounds interesting. Other than that, we can see the Ford Mustang in lime on the box. A flashy color choice, but works well for the car, I think. On the back of the box, we can see the rear of the car. A small hint about the special pullback function. A side shot of the original Mustang Shelby GT500 and another promo for the AR functionality. So, the box has multiple QR codes on it and it's a bit confusing. The one on the side leads to a Ford website and offers some kind of a game. The other one on the back is supposed to take us to the LEGO AR application, I guess, but currently only the LEGO Technic page comes up. It's understandable since the set is officially not released yet. Anyway, let's open the box. The set has 544 pieces, the price is 49.99 euros or dollars, and it will be released on the 1st of January. We have four numbered bags inside, the manual, the sticker sheet, and not one, but two pullback motors. Let's check the manual if we get any clues about the new features. Here's yet another QR code on the cover, but this one is only for the app that has the digital building instructions. Not much information at the beginning, there are two building phases and that's all. How about the end? Not sure about you, but for me these photos here did not really provide too much information about the augmented reality experience, although that food-operated mechanism looks interesting. At this point I don't have access yet to the app, so I cannot show you that functionality. Hopefully it will be available for the next video. We can see the original Shelby Mustang on the other side, next to the LEGO version. I think the basic shapes look ok, considering the scale of the car. At the end, here is the part list, now let's start building. So, the two pullback motors are added at the very beginning of the build, and here we have the joint rear axle and the beginning of some sort of launch mechanism. There is also a rear sticker that I cannot really identify. Any clues what does this mean exactly? This year we gradually saw new pins replacing the old design in Technic sets. This 3 module long pin with bush is no exception. The light bluish grey is the new one, the orange is the one we knew previously. As you see there are quite a few differences, the slots and ridges were changed, and there are now two flat sections on the brim as well. The element IDs were not updated, they are the same as previously despite the change of mold. We continue with the front section of the chassis and there are a couple of interesting details. This is the front axle, and it has an unusual structure to hold it in this half module offset position. Another expected but very unfortunate detail about it, it's a pullback car, so there's no steering at all. Here we also have an odd construction with these two excellent pin connector hubs. This one pointing towards the rear seems to be already blocked by these parts here, so why they did not use this piece instead? It also comes in the same set, although in phase 2. Let me know in the comments if you have some good theories. We continue building and reinforcing the chassis, and here comes another element for the pullback trigger mechanism. It's not functional yet, we need a couple of parts. And we have those parts added now, together with the seats. I also added the wheels from Bax 2 for a quick demonstration, so here's the mechanism. When the red beam is pushed down, it pushes that lime L beam against the assembly with the rubber piece. This clears the way for the part on the rear axle, and the axle rotates freely. If you lift the red beam up, then the lime L beam is pushed a bit backwards and it blocks the rear axle like a ratchet. This way you can wind up the pullback motors, but they stay locked until you press the red lever down. A simple but cool mechanism, can't wait to test the reliability when the model is fully completed. Here's a technique I see more and more frequently recently in official sets and it still surprises me. This way of connecting segments with these bars pushed through the Technic pins. Oh, and I'm sure you will ask, yes, the lime of those pin with pinhole parts is still visibly different compared to the lime beams. It is probably less visible than on the Cyan, but the difference is still there, I think it's simply a different mix of plastic. We get this useful modified lift arm piece in lime with this set, and this assembly will be one of the doors. The door has an unusual sticker that does not cover the whole part, and I'm a bit sad to realize that LEGO still cannot match the lime of the sticker with the lime of the pieces. This is quite a challenging color for them. Not one but two new pieces in lime, the small wheel arches and the 1x2 thin lift arm that acts here as a door handle. A small mistake in the manual, 
don't try to find all four small beams on this image. There are only two added in each phase. Here's the rear bumper added to the car, and this is the end of BEX 1. The first item from BEX 2 is the dashboard with the steering wheel. Here's the reason for the smaller sticker on the door. The black beams would cover a full sticker, so there's no need for them. A little system assembly for the hood vents. At least, I think these are called vents. The comment section will help me for sure. Here comes the grille, mostly detailed with stickers, and then the front lights, which are at least partially brick built, although it also has stickers. The front of the hood with another newish piece in the center that was not available in line before, and a cool way to keep this section angled with that one by one round piece pushing it to the correct position. I really like these small but useful details. The A pillars are pretty fat, but they also have those 1x4 thin lift arms in lime for the first time. Then we need to add the roof panels with some partial stickers that are quite tricky to align with each other. Unfortunately, even if they are aligned properly, the color difference really pops. This is the hood, and it is almost entirely made of that new small panel type. Now that weird piece starts to make sense in the middle of the dashboard, that one holds the hood. The iconic rear lights are only stickers, unfortunately. They are added to system build assemblies. These assemblies are mounted again at a specific angle and they don't flap around, which is nice. This weird piece is the extension of the starter mechanism and with the longer handle now it is easier to operate and there's a distinctive click when it is released. All we have left is the spoiler and the four wheels and we are done. Well, actually we are not done yet. There are still a few pages in the manual, but no, sadly these are not for the B model. There's an option to remove that lever and close the gap at the rear if you want to put the car on display. It's a nice touch, although you need to pay attention to some parts. So, here is the completed set. I like the overall look, nothing magnificent, but it's a decent job at this scale. I would say the Mustang is certainly more recognizable for the first side than the Corvette was a few years ago. The front works well. I like that the headlights are not fully sticker only. Their position is a bit off, they are slightly lower than they should be, but considering the part usage above them, there's no way to put them higher. The grill with the logo looks cool and the pieces framing it have the proper shape, but unfortunately they are not fixed in place, so they can be misaligned easily. The hood can be opened, but there's not much to look there. I'm sure the beefy A pillars will be criticized a lot, but they are sort of required for the sake of stability, especially with the pullback function. I like how the designer tried to make them look thinner with the black and lime combination. It only works from a certain distance, but at least the effort can be respected. The doors are not opening, and the interior only have some very minimal details. The rear is fine, especially when the lever is removed and we fill the gap. This angled section with the lights and the spoiler is unfortunately relatively easy to be pushed down behind the bumper. Color consistency with the parts is ok, the pink connectors have a different shade as I showed you earlier, luckily they are mostly hidden in this build. What I really don't like is the color of the stickers, that green is very far from the line of the plastic, it looks very weird. Now let's see the pullback function. With the lever down, the wheels roll freely, I mean the car acts like a normal pullback set. If you leave the lever, then the ratchet function is activated. You can push the car back to wind up the pullback motors, but they won't be released until the lever is up. Once you are ready, you simply push down the lever and the car is launched at a decent speed. The set really benefits from the two pullback motors. It is slightly faster than the smaller sets with a single motor which is good, considering the significant weight difference. The overall stability is ok, but the brick built headlights have a slight disadvantage this time. They will be the ones falling off in case the car is crashed. The launch mechanism is a cool extension of the pullback function as I was always struggling with the smaller sets, especially if I try to race multiple cars against each other. But is it cool enough to otherwise limit the functionality of the car? This will be very much a personal preference, I think kids might enjoy the pullback sets more, but I see a lot of dissatisfied AFOLs who would have preferred more functions like the usual fake engine, steering, opening doors and things like we used to see at this scale. I'm also the one who would be happier with working functions instead of the pullback motors. Well, actually, I would love to see them both. There's no B model that is quite a shame. I think it was a missed opportunity to provide some extra parts for two versions. One with hand of gas steering and the fake engine, and another one with the locked steering and the pullback function. On the plus side, the look really benefits from the fixed wheels. 
we can have nice wide ones both at the rear and at the front, and there's no big gap under the wheel arches. If we take a look at the Corvette for example, this simply could not work with that setup. I also appreciate the removable lever at the rear, the car can become a small scale display piece. The big question at this point is the added value of the augmented reality app. I don't have high hopes, but maybe LEGO will surprise us. The beta access was promised for today, so hopefully I will be able to show you how it works in the next video with the Porsche. So what do you think? Do we really need 4 licensed pullback sets this year? What do you prefer for 50 bucks? Functional details or some advanced pullback function? I would love to hear your thoughts about this and about the set in general, please share them in the comments. Tomorrow you can expect the next video with a detailed review about the Porsche, but it will contain much more actually. I will do the obligatory car transporter test, do some pullback racing and I will share my personal opinion about the two new cars versus some other ones in the scale and price range from the previous years. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments, if you like this video then please give it a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe with notifications if you don't want to miss the upcoming 2022 Technic reviews and my other LEGO RC videos. See you next time, bye bye.